Okay, so today we're going to be talking about craniopharyngioma. Big, long word. And what we, it's a condition we're going to be talking about. Now, who basically gets craniopharyngioma? Usually, it's found in kids between the ages of 5 and 10. Okay, and usually, it's not diagnosed until somebody gets symptoms. So usually between the age of 5 and 10 years old. Okay, so what exactly is a craniopharyngioma? Well, it's a tumor that we happen to get in a part of the brain, and we're going to get it down in here by what's called the pituitary gland. So let's go ahead and put a little line right here, and this is my pituitary gland. Okay, and if you recall, the pituitary gland is responsible for things such as releasing growth hormone, which helps you grow. So one of the signs that you will see sometimes in a craniopharyngioma is dwarfism because of the fact that the tumor grows and puts pressure onto the penile gland. And now the penile gland doesn't function properly. Another thing that you have in this area is something called your hypothalamus. So you have the hypothalamus. And what the hypothalamus is responsible for is things such as thirst, uh, and hunger. So it's not uncommon also to have, for these kids to have excessive thirst. If they have excessive thirst, they're going to drink a lot of water. And when they drink a lot of water, they're going to go to the bathroom a lot. Okay, so it's not uncommon to get excessive urination. But like we said, with the hypothalamus, it also is responsible for things such as hunger. So because now we get a tumor growing into this area, what's going to happen is the hypothalamus isn't working properly. So now kids may think that they're hungry when they're actually not. It's just the hypothalamus is not working properly due to the tumor and they're going to eat a lot. It's not uncommon to get weight gain with this. So we can get weight gain, we get excessive thirst, we can have dwarfism. The other thing is, <clears throat> is this is the front of the brain looking this way. And this is where the eyes would be. So imagine these are your eyes. And then coming off the eyes, you have a nerve called the optic nerve. And the optic nerve is going to come back and it actually, okay, it's going to come back and it's going to cross to the opposite side. Part of it's going to cross to the opposite side. And then imagine your other eye is over on the other side and it's going to have it come back too. Let's push this back here a little bit further. It's going to come back and these cross over. Well, as this tumor grows, what it can do is it can actually grow and put pressure on where those nerves cross over. And that's called the optic chiasm. Okay, that's where the nerves cross over. So another condition or problem that kids may get with this is they may have vision problems. Right? The biggest problem, biggest concern with this tumor is the fact that if you see this area in here, and I'm gonna just draw this, this should be like it should be complete. You have these red cells here. These are called ependymal cells. The complex is called the choroid plexus. And it makes something called cerebral spinal fluid. So the cerebral spinal fluid comes out of there and builds up and eventually it goes down out of the brain. And it's going to go into the, basically it's going to end up in the center of the spinal cord. And then it makes its way back to the brain and then it enters into the bloodstream. And from there, basically, you, you end up urinating it out. So what can happen is, as this tumor grows, if it starts to grow big enough, it can actually start to push this whole complex back, and it can clog this opening here where that cerebral spinal fluid drains to. So what will happen now is the cerebral spinal fluid starts to back up, just like a clogged drain if you keep the water running, and this is going to start leaking out of those areas and into other areas. What that will do on a young kid, because their brain has not fully fused yet like an adult has, this will cause the brain to expand. I'm sorry, the head to expand. And this is called hydrocephaly. Okay, and that's probably the biggest problem that you can get with this. Good thing is about this, and if I haven't mentioned it already, is that craniopharyngiomas are treatable. 
They are benign, so they're not going to spread to other parts of the body. Um, and if worse comes to worse, you can actually remove them with surgery. So that is basically it for craniopharyngioma. So if you look, this is an example of hydrocephaly. And this is an example of severe hydrocephaly.